and today's topic of my discussion will be about the pharyngeal arches which are also called as the branchial arches so students before discussing about this topic in detail firstly i would like to make this point clear as to what is the branchial or the pharyngeal arch so students many of the structures of the head and neck region they develop from the pharyngeal or the branchial arches so uh, defining the branchial or the pharyngeal arches the branchial or the pharyngeal arches these are the rod like thickenings of the mesoderm which are present in the wall of the foregut so students the pharyngeal or the branchial arches these are the rod like thickenings of the mesoderm which are present in the wall of the foregut so each of the pharyngeal or the branchial arches it is going to have certain components that is the skeletal component the muscle component the nerve and the arterial component so students these pharyngeal arches they are uh, responsible for the formation of the many of the structures of the head and neck region and sometimes these pharyngeal or the branchial arches can uh, they are also called as the pharyngeal or the branchial apparatus so students the branchial apparatus it is basically comprising of the three components that is the pharyngeal arches the branch the pharyngeal pouches and the pharyngeal grooves so students beginning with so uh, looking at the development the, that is uh, from what they are derived so students these pharyngeal or the branchial arches the grooves the grooves of the branchial apparatus that is the pharyngeal grooves it is mostly made up of the ectoderm it mostly consists of the ectoderm so students the grooves of the pharyngeal arches they are composed of the ectoderm the pouches are composed of the endoderm whereas the uh, pharyngeal arches of the branchial or the pharyngeal apparatus it is basically comprising of the mesoderm and the neural crest cells so today the uh, topic what i'll be discussing it is about the derivatives from the first arch from the second arch i'll be focusing upon so students it becomes very difficult and cumbersome to remember as to what are the derivatives of the each arch as i have already told you that these branchial uh, arches or the pharyngeal arches these are the rod like thickenings of the mesoderm present in the wall of the foregut and each pharyngeal arch consists of a skeletal element a striated muscle a nerve and an arterial arch so students beginning with it becomes very difficult to remember as to what is the uh, skeletal element from the first arch the nerve of the first arch or the muscles of the first arch so today i'll be discussing it in the form of a simple mnemonic so beginning with the first arch so students the first arch it is basically called it is given the name of the mandibular arch so students the first arch of the branchial or the pharyngeal uh arches it is the first arch is called as the mandibular arch and the skeletal elements what are derived from it they are basically the meckel's cartilage so students do remember as to what is the meckel's cartilage a short dis uh, discussion so the meckel's cartilage it is the cartilage which is the response which after ossification it is going to form the malleus and the incus so students do remember the meckel's cartilage the ossification of the metal's cartilage it is responsible for the formation of the malleus and the incus bones so the next derivative from the mandibular first arch it is the malleus and the incus bones of the ear ossicles moving on to the third derivative that is it is the ligament of the malleus fourth that is the anterior mandible fifth the zygomatic bone sixth it is the palatine bones they are derived after that the part of the temporal bone and the very important or the star point because i have mentioned it in the form of a star because it is the sphenomandibular ligament which is also derived from the first arch or the mandibular arch so students 
next is is the formation the uh, first arch the skeletal element what is derived it is also the formation of maxilla students i'll be discussing as to why i have made a star over here this is very important the sphenomandibular ligament in the second arch i'll be tell telling you about this moving on to the nerve what is derived from the first first arch it is the mandibular nerve which is the which is the third division of the trigeminal nerve 5 that is the of the trigeminal nerve the third division of the trigeminal nerve that is the mandibular nerve it is derived from the mandibular arch and the muscles of mastication firstly the muscles what are derived it is the muscles of mastication that is the mom mom so the muscles of mastication which includes the masseter the lateral pterygoid the medial pterygoid and the temporalis they are derived from the first arch or the mandibular arch moving on to the next muscles that is the anterior belly of the digastric the tensor tympani and the tensor palati the tt and the tp they are derived from the first arch moving on to the next this uh, next arch that is the second pharyngeal arch which is also called as the hyoid arch so students beginning with the hyoid arch do remember the mnemonic or the short trick to remember the derivatives of the second pharyngeal arch or the hyoid arch it is the s so in this we are going to have all the s's so every so first the first um, the s the skeletal elements, the S's, what are there in this is the stepes, the styloid process, the smaller cornea of the hyoid bone and the superior part of the body of the hyoid bone. So students do remember it is the hyoid arch or the second arch. It is having all the skeletal elements which are going to begin with the alphabet S. So all the S's, they are derived from the second arch except the sphenomandibular ligament which is derived from the first arch so students do remember when it comes to the second arch whenever you need to uh, choose a particular in an mcq in a question when you need to take a particular option do remember that all the s's are going to be derived from the second arch or the hyoid arch but it is the sphenomandibular ligament which is going to be derived from the first man first arch that is the mandibular arch so moving on to the nerve of the second arch this is the nerve of the second arch it is the facial nerve that is the seventh cranial nerve so the seventh cranial nerve that is the facial nerve it is the nerve which is derived from the second arch and moving on to the muscles of mastication so the muscles of mastication i have simplified it in the form of a mnemonic that is the mops and the psam so students just by remembering the mnemonic mops and the PSAM, we can very easily remember about the muscles what are derived from the second arch or the hyoid arch. So the first M of the MOPS, it is going to refer to the muscles of the face. Next, the O is going to refer to the occipitofrontalis muscle. That is the muscle which is extending from the occiput to the uh, frontal region of the skull. Moving on to the next, that is the P, that is the platysma muscle and the next s it is going to refer to the stylohyoid muscle so this i have covered the mops after that we have the mnemonic that is the p sam so the first p of the p sam it is going to refer to the posterior belly of the digastric students do remember the anterior belly of the digastric is derived from the first arch and whereas the posterior belly of the digastric is having the derivative from the second arch it is derived from the second arch moving on to the next s of the sam that is the stapedius muscle and finally the a and m that is the auricular muscles that is the muscles which are surrounding the auricle so students this was a short discussion about the pharyngeal arches particularly the first and the second pharyngeal arches in the upcoming videos i'll be talking of the third and the fourth arches so students if you do like my video don't forget to subscribe my channel and do press the bell icon so that you can be further updated for the upcoming videos thank you for watching